Hi, my name is Ted Miller. My wife Melissa and I, along with our four children, we own and operate Delta Dairy LLC in Northeast Louisiana. Usually getting up around 3 to 3.15 to come over and help milk the cows in the morning. Usually get done with that chore around 7.30. Then we go back over, have breakfast, bookkeeping, housework, and just making sure our kids are on task in their homeschool. We were dairying in Pennsylvania. My wife and I, we both grew up in Pennsylvania. We farmed there for a, uh, almost 10 years. Found the need to expand. Had difficulty doing that with uh, land and, and uh, availability of resource up there. So we had the opportunity to join with uh, Charles and Dorothy Opitz, form a partnership, develop a dairy. So that's what we've been working at for the past 10 years. And we were fortunate enough to be able to purchase the operation from the Opitzes uh, just last year in 2019. We operate a grass dairy just like we did in Pennsylvania. Our mission would be to produce milk in an environmentally and economically sustainable fashion. The dairy business is nothing more than material handling business. Cattle produce milk. They eat forage feedstuffs and byproducts, and those are all pounds of dry matter of material that need to move into the cow. She carries the waste product back to the soil where we need it, and we want to intervene as little as possible in that process. If we were to, to build a confinement style, higher production dairy in this location, in this climate right here, I think we would struggle. We don't get near the production per cow. That, uh, that a confinement dairy would get, but we, we can be very efficient with our, with our inputs, our, our capital infrastructure, buildings, equipment, uh, things like that are, are a lot, you need a lot less of that here. Coming here and what we had in Pennsylvania, we were bare bones. We wanted to do something that we didn't have to put a ton of money into. I mean, we've had to put money into stuff, but with it being a grass-based operation, you're able to utilize your ground that you have and just for a lower input and sustainability, we just saw that that's the way that we wanted to go. We talk about environmental sustainability. We talk about what we can do as producers to enhance soil health, uh, enhance the quality of forage, have healthy cattle. But at the end of the day, we've got to make a profit doing that uh, because if we can't be economically sustainable on our land, whatever positive environmental impact we made is going to be gone very quickly when we're gone. We've had some four long years of low prices in the dairy industry, so we just had to really buckle down and look at, you know, what is essential for us to make sure that our cows are fed, um, that we are able to ship, you know, quality milk to our co-op. Really, it's a, it's a question of margin. At the end of the day, we're selling milk by the hundredweight. We're getting paid by the hundredweight. We want to keep as much of that per hundredweight payment as we can. And, and a grazing model allows us to be, uh, be very efficient in regards to that. We have a field rep that will call us with anything that they see. We also are able to get online with the milk co-op and they show us our um, results for each load that we ship. It shows our somatic cell, the pounds that we shipped, and also butter fat and protein levels in that load of milk. So we're able to basically on a daily basis, once the milk truck goes, um, we're able to see you know, exactly how many pounds we shipped and that can tell us, you know, do we need to make a decision out in the field? Are we not giving them enough grass? Are we not giving them enough baleage in the winter? You know, um, to make sure that we are meeting the needs of that cow. There's really four things, four inputs that we're given that's free that we must utilize. We're given rainfall, we're given sunlight, form of solar energy. We're given carbon, form of the sequestration of carbon dioxide, transferring itself into organic matter. And we're given the regenerative seeds of, of clovers and grasses that reproduce themselves. Those are all inputs that are not traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. They're not handled by a monopoly and we don't even have to pay for them. So we need to maximize our utilization of those four inputs to give us as much profit margin as we can get. We have a unique opportunity in this part of the world to have a 300-day growing season. Uh, 
So our goal is to be, grow, be able to grow some kind of forage and produce dry matter of some, of some level 300 days of the year. And then we want to see that harvested 365 days of the year. Hi, I'm Wink Allison. I'm a forage extension specialist with the LSU Ag Center. Very important to uh, have the quantity out there that's needed by the cattle and then try to get the quality that you need. Quality of forage is a real driver in um, milk production and dairy cattle. It's very interesting to talk with dairy people when you talk about forage quality because they understand it on a daily basis. They're measuring it in that milk tank. And that's one challenge in the South is we can produce a lot of pounds of forage, uh, but a lot of it is substandard quality for dairy cattle. We make all of our hay as silage hay, uh, meaning that we cut it and we weld it to around 60% moisture, and then we bale it, uh, wrap it in an anaerobic environment. Without oxygen, then the sugar in the plant uh, ferments uh, and allows us to retain uh, more of the energy, uh, more of the carbohydrate that was in that forage when it was growing in the field. Uh, it's not as good as it was when it was grown in the field, but it's, it's as close as we can get it. So it's very important for them to have a fairly high quality feed uh, with a pretty good quantity. Hello, my name is Chris Sullivan. I am a veterinarian in Northeast Louisiana uh, and practice both large and small animal veterinary medicine. The first thing that's going to leave in an animal, if they don't have the proper nutrition, are the things they don't have. They're always going to maintain their body, you know, and keep going. So extra things like lactation and like reproduction are going to be the things that leave. So if the nutrition is not right, then the first thing they do is they're not going to rebreed because they're going to give up something. We don't have a lot of calving issues. Um, and I do link that back to nutrition. Their reproductive rates are like so much better than anybody else around here but they, they pay attention to the nutritional level at, at such a tremendous level. Our forage base would consist of uh, hybrid Bermuda grass in the summertime. We overseed a portion of that with oats and rye and ryegrass to bring in a higher quality forage in the wintertime for our lactating cows. So we can have a little bit earlier grazing, possibly in November to early December with that. Ted's been pretty successful in areas with white clover. Uh, we've utilized some red and now he's using some of the annual clovers. At the end of the day, we've got to not only produce as many pounds of dry matter as forage as we can, we need uh, as much of that to be of a high level of digestibility or high quality as much as we can through the, through the lactation curve or during the lactation curve of the cattle. One thing with Ted is he's willing to try different forages and, and different ways of grazing and he's been very impressive to work with and, and interesting. I've learned a lot from Ted uh, myself. Hello, my name is Jason Hardy. I'm the District Conservationist for the USDA NRCS here in Franklin Parish, Louisiana. Ted uh, Miller here on this dairy farm. This was an existing cropland and wanted to establish permanent perennial grass to sustain a dairy operation for years to come. So one of the first things we do is we look at nutrient management. We're looking at what is the fertility of the soil? What type of grass is going to perform at the best for them? Uh, on, on this particular landscape, according to the soil type, topography, drainage, things of that nature. The soil is very weathered here, so erosion has been an issue on some of the slopes that are here on the farm. By moving that into a perennial grass, um, we've had the opportunity to stop that erosion, uh, to allow that soil to heal, and, and we've seen over time uh, our, our forage quality and our stands have improved greatly from where, where they were uh, originally. The main way that we improved the soils here was just by uh, rotating cattle. We run a, a, a long rest period rotation system. Our grasses get a lot of rest, um, so we get a lot, of, a lot of biomass above and below the ground. It's really uh, similar to what the, the way the buffalo graze the prairie. Uh, they would come in and, and do a 
lot of devastating removal very quickly and move on. Um, and and those, uh, those pastures got a, long, a lot of time to rest and recover. These soils, again, I mentioned this was a weathered soil that we're working with, it, and its water holding capability is somewhat limited. If we would go a very long period of time without rain, our forage growing potential drops very quickly. Primarily having it available at a fairly shallow depth uh, and high quality makes our, our pumping costs reasonable. Mister line that's, that's installed on the bottom side of the pivots that allows us to, to put a mist out, mist the cattle. The great thing about that is we can, we can walk that irrigation rig across a given paddock over a 12 hour period, cows will follow that and it will allow for uh, nutrient dispersal from the cows to be very even, very efficiently utilized. We unroll hay because we want, we want the cattle spread out as much as they possibly can be. It's to minimize the impact on the soil um, and also to disperse nutrients as, as far and wide as we possibly can disperse them. We have seen um, the soil health um, really explode. So even in, even in a decade, we've seen tremendous um, strides made in, to improve soil health and soil quality here, which we're really excited about. We feel really blessed to be able to have our kids grow up on a farm and, you know, learn the responsibilities that go along with it. Jared's employed full-time on the farm taking a welding course in the evenings, but he works all day up till then. His primary role is he's our, he's our main mechanic. He, is, uh, he would be our welder, and he's also our main equipment operator. When Dad's gone, I make sure everything goes good. Something breaks, I usually get the uh, pleasure of fixing it. I think at this stage of the game, it's more about uh, if this environment can allow him to maximize it and grow his abilities and then as, as he decides what he wants to do with that, this is definitely uh, would be available to be, to be looked at, uh, but really that's up to him. I'd like to run it whenever Dad decides to give it up. I like what we're doing here. I'd like to continue it. You also can't shelter your kids from life, so, you know, when things are tough, you know, you have to be honest and open with them that, you know, hey, this is the way it is right now, but if we all just, you know, keep chugging along, you know, We'll make it. This is a real uh, learning process. Uh, it'll continue to be a learning process and um, it's, it's not anything we're ever going to arrive on. We're never going to write a book about how it should be done. There's a lot of variation, you know, with milk prices that we've seen in the past five years and we're lucky to still be here. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow in this business and it's tough um, and it's the margins are thin, it's cutthroat, it demands optimal efficiency. Even though the prices are where they are right now, they're coming up, we need to make sure in the good times that we remember, hey, you know, it could flip in an instant. And those are the reasons that we strive for to achieve those efficiencies. And again, at the end of the day, we're producing, we're producing milk. <clears throat> we're getting paid for a given volume of milk. We want our cost of that given volume to be as low as it possibly can uh, so that we can, we can clear a margin be able to own our land, to be able to care for our land long term.